One of the most common details that we're asked to build is the steel railing. We love the crisp, clean lines that you can get with this material. In the next few videos, we're going to be talking about everything it takes to make one of these things, from material selection to how to take your measurements to how to make your welds. We're going to get into the details of short arc MIG. And we're also going to finish one and actually install it. So it's going to take a few videos, but we're going to get into all of the details. It's going to be a cool series, and then you'll be able to build your own from scratch. Let's get back over to the shop and get started. All right, so we're here back at the shop and we're going to be taking measurements and showing you how to get a few angles off of drawings and we'll be fitting up this first rail. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the two different types of materials that we use mainly for rails. Um, do it mostly out of steel and the two types of steel are cold rolled and hot rolled. Um, A36 steel. And the main differences between these two is this one is rolled at near room temperature. So the advantage of that is you've got nice clean edges, really strong corners, and very straight geometries. So if you have something that is going to be a focal point of your design and you're going to have people looking down a long stretch and you want it to be perfectly straight, cold roll is definitely your way to go. Now, for the other outdoor rails and stuff, it's cheaper to go with your hot rolled steel. This one's rolled at about 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And because it's not at final dimensions as they're rolling it, it tends to bow and twist on its way through. So you'll get slight variations in thickness. You'll also get slight variations in your straightness. For the most part, it's fine for what we do, um, especially on your outdoor rail. So this is what we're going to be using for these rails. Uh, but I did want to point out that we can do the cold rolled as well if you have something that's a little more high end. I want to talk a little bit about drawings and reading drawings. Um, I think that's one of the big weaknesses for a lot of your everyday guys who says, hey, I want to get into welding. They might know how to weld, they know how to run a saw, they know how to run a tape measure, but reading a print and then being able to find the measurements that aren't on that print can be difficult. So there's different ways that you can do this. I see a lot of people going out there and trying to mock up these, you know, these jigs with laying it out on the floor and trying to figure it all out and recreating the scene in 2D on the floor. And that's okay, but that takes a lot of time when you can just use a little bit of math and figure out what you want to do. Okay, so we have got the opposite on this side, and that's this line from here down to here. And we have got the adjacent, which is this line from here over to here. So that gives me this length here is my hypotenuse. All right. So we have hypotenuse adjacent opposite. And we all remember from school, or maybe we don't, but we should, sine cosine tangent. Oscar had a hold on Amy, right? And most of the time we're going to use tan, so that's what I'm going to focus on here. So I know my opposite and I know my adjacent. So I'm trying to find this angle here, right? So my angle is going to be equal to the inverse tan, inverse tangent of my opposite over my hypotenuse. So to draw that out, we've got our opposite is 44.25 inches. We have our adjacent is 72 and 3 quarters. Come over to my calculator here. 44.25 divided by 72.75. Yeah, that's right. Equals 0 0.6082. And we'll do the inverse tangent of that, and so we'll say inverse tangent of 0 0.6082, and I get 31, my angle is equal to 31.3 degrees. I know a bunch of you are sitting there thinking, oh man, I haven't done trig since high school, or maybe, hopefully not, but maybe you were the kid that said, teacher, when am I going to ever use this trig? I want to be a welder, right? You got to use it. I mean, it makes your life so much easier. What we'll do now is go set up the saw 
and make our cut. I wanna get into a little detail here on how we set it up. Remember, we came up with a 31.3 degrees, and that was between here and horizontal. Well, our actual angle between our vertical includes a 90 degrees between the vertical and the horizontal is 90, and then from horizontal to our actual rail is 31.3 degrees. So you add those two together, and we get 121.3 degrees. Our saw will not cut a 31.3 degrees, so we can't put a hard 90 on this vertical and then a 31.3, so I need to divide that by two. So if I take my 121.3, divide it by two, I get a 60.65 degree angle that will put half the angle on our uh, hypotenuse here and it'll put half the angle on the vertical here. To set up the saw, you have two set screws here. I've loosened them, I've put them in the right angle to read 60.6 on my digital protractor between that and my uh, relief for the blade to go through. I'm going to move the material around here, get it clamped down, and then I'll make the cut. PPE on. All right. I'm going to set up the saw now to do a 90 degree cut and I'll get my overall length for that vertical. Grab the tape measure here, a marker, and this vertical from the bottom of it to the top is going to be four foot even. Measure out four foot. All right, so what we've done so far is we have made the cuts for this first angle and have fitted up on our table. We're going to continue the process through the rest of this handrail, and when you come back next week, we'll have the whole handrail fit up on this table ready to weld. I know some of this stuff may seem complicated, especially the trigonometry stuff. It's really not. Once you get into the hang of it, make yourself a cut sheet. Have every member of your fabrication laid out with the links and the angles, and that way when you set up on the saw, you can just knock it out fast, have everything ready to go when you come to the fit-up table. Next week, we're going to be welding this thing together, and we're going to get into all the cool details about short-circuit gas metal arc welding. So join me next week on The Build Show.